We probably all remember that Grace Nallen went to Duke. And if we had to conjure up the first image that comes to mind, it's probably not related to his basketball skills. But that's unfortunate because in college, Grace Nallen was a bad, bad man. Of course, we all know he was a shooter, the kind who could kill his own with a skip pass when the weak side forward couldn't close out in time. But from a pro scout's point of view, one of the real keys to figuring out if he could shoot in the NBA was looking at release time and a very pro set moving away from the basket to the corner where you can see the slightest of hops on the catch, a tiny dip, and an ultra quick shot before the defense knew what hit him. Again, notice the minimal but vital dip on the catch while lifting both feet in the air before catching it. This gets the whole muscle chain engaged properly for the shot. Coming off of handoffs is another staple in NBA offenses. And out of this horn set, you can see Allen have success, sprinting into a catch to his left, where his shooting elbow and hip are already aligned to the hoop, and he makes this shot look easy. Another key to predicting success in the NBA is shot distance, and Allen made it a habit to be several feet behind the college line on most of his threes, giving him an extra split second to get the shot off over a decent contest. I'm sure they needed evidence of Allen shooting heavily contested threes as well, and this flare to the corner certainly falls into that category, answering the question, what happens when bigger, stronger, and faster athletes are out there trying to harass him? Another example out of the baseline out of bounds play, as he's running almost full speed to the corner and gets this off before the defense can get there to affect the outcome. This inside ball screen on the left side with Allen spotting up on the weak side is the exact type of action he'd get in the NBA most of the time. And I'm certainly encouraged by seeing him able to knock down this shot from 26 feet out, but also that he uses the hop to get proper rhythm and a quick release. Here's an even quicker hop from farther out off the catch that should have sold scouts on his ability to stroke it at the NBA level where he's established himself as an elite shooter at 40% with the Memphis Grizzlies. If shooting was his only talent and he couldn't do much else on the floor, he still would have had a shot at making an NBA team, but let me assure you, that wasn't all of his game. Despite looking slightly stiff and awkward at times, he was a high flyer who could rise up and just dunk on you in a variety of ways. There are guys who probably never recovered from being posterized like this, and if you let him get a runway, forget about it. He also had a knack for being in the right place at the right time, like on this good read of the pick and roll, and then gets to the rim with a double pump dunk. This is next level athletic and finishing ability, folks. He was an active defender. Out of Duke's zone, watch how he pressures the high post pass into a deflection, and then anticipates beautifully the release pass to the top, where he can beat everyone down the court for another athletic jam. And when they extended the zone defense to half court, he again steps into the passing lane and then gets to show off how high he can get on the strong finish. Another good read from the weak side to steal this duck and pass and watch how he goes coast to coast with his head up, seizing the opening to the middle for the good left-handed finish. But it wasn't just the dunks that dazzled me on his forays to the rim in transition. He demonstrated a next level finishing package that included tremendous body control and the ability to shoot the ball through contact on the way down and softly with touch. On this coast to coast, he finishes with an off foot lefty floating flip, softly off the glass for another quick two points. How about this catch of a great pass and then the righty reverse on the right side of the rim on the way down as the defender flies by? This requires all sorts of athletic ability that normal people simply do not possess. But this one got me out of my seat a little bit as he uses the behind the back move to avoid getting stripped before finishing with a smooth off foot lefty layup, making the defender look absolutely foolish in the process. His game didn't stop at highlight dunks and splashing threes from deep. He averaged close to five assists per game and a common target was Marvin Bagley on lobs. And what was impressive about these was the distance he had to throw these passes, on time and on target, in order for Bagley to finish it off with a slam dunk. 
even when he was doubled by the defense, he always knew where Bagley was to throw it up to him and thwart the defense. It wasn't all perimeter spot ups and passes where he had time to find him and then throw it. Here's a nice drive right at the help as Bagley moves in along the baseline. Good lob, good finish. While it was easy to predict that at Grayson's height, he probably wouldn't be getting into the lane and finishing very often in the NBA, he had a body of work on his drives that was quite impressive. Getting by the first line of defenders wasn't hard for him, and finishing strong through contact was expected in plays like this. On this drive, next level footwork is presented as he uses the threat of a shot from an elite shooter to get right into the lane, then watch how he elevates with the right-left in rhythm two-footed jump then rotating his torso on the way up to allow him to float back towards the front of the rim and the easy finger roll. Even when an athletic big man rotated over to pick him up on this drive, he extends his last step to give him more space and uses an extended right arm hook off the glass to avoid the block and get another two points. He didn't run a ton of pick and rolls as the ball handler but here's clear evidence of his ability to drive to his offhand, get into the lane and in front of his man, then absorb the contact to the head and still finish the shot softly. Allen's career at Duke is filled with what can only be described as basketball plays, the kind that display a natural talent for the game, but also a dedication to leaving every ounce of energy on the floor. His basketball IQ was off the charts. His effort was unquestionable. And when you combine that with this athletic ability, you get a great college player who's ready to help a good team in the NBA. It was clear to me that a guy who could continually come up with clutch plays, execute a pattern offense, and simply make the right play at the right time should get as much respect as possible and certainly should have seen him get picked higher than the 21st pick in the 2018 NBA draft. Is it fair that he got judged by some of his other moves that were deemed unsportsmanlike? Maybe, but it looked like a case of immaturity, something that would naturally go away over time. And if you're an NBA team on the hunt for a guy who could really shoot the ball from deep, but could get over the rim on his finishes and handle the ball and give supreme energy on the defensive end, then you simply ignore the other stuff and feel good about picking Grayson Allen in the draft knowing you're improving your team. Stay tuned every week as I'll spotlight another player from the ACC who's doing great work in the NBA now. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. After all, at B-Ball Breakdown, we're not a channel, we're a conversation. You in?